I saw B.B. King, Big Mama Thornton, um, uh, just uh, uh, actually Muddy Waters, um, just uh, Jay McShann, uh, and just countless, countless legends. There were more legends on that stage than I can even mention. Uh, they actually did a uh, recording of that, and it's called The Blues Summit, and it is a double CD that's out. And I, after that event... Um, there was no other music in my life that meant anything to me other than the blues. I guess if I had to, if you really pinned me down and said what single song or, or blues player artist uh, really grabbed me, I think it was Skip James. Um, first time I heard his stuff, it was like, wow, what is this? This is just like, it's, it, it's transcendental, you know? It was just the melodies and the, the, sing, the falsetto singing and the playing. It was just like <laughs> unbelievable. I think it was almost like the personal nature of it. I mean, it even started back when I was in college. Taj Mahal was making the scene in Massachusetts then. You know, everybody said, oh yeah, I saw Taj at UMass, and I was about 40 miles away from UMass. So it was like somebody personal. I picked up Taj Mahal um, vinyl at that time, and just really liked the way he said things, and I started going in, and after that it was Charlie Muscle White, and after that Muddy Waters. I always call it the three M's, Mahal, Muddy, and Muscle White. Right on. It was like Etta James when I first heard, heard her sing Blues is my business. That song stuck stuck with me. It was probably 1971. I was in junior high, and my buddy's uh, older brother got the the Hooker and Heat album. John Lee Hooker and the Canned Heat. The Canned Heat ah. hired John Lee Hooker to uh, uh, to do this uh, album, and they they built a wood platform so they could mic his stomping when he played. And they just mic. They had a vocal mic, uh, a guitar mic, and this stomping. And they let him do like a half a side by himself. And then they put Alan Wilson on the harp and never played before and just started jamming together. And eventually, it's a, it's a double album. And eventually, the whole band started in and uh, just jamming. And, and, and they leave all the little talking in between there, you know, and uh, they go, well, that's about 10 songs. He said, and Hooker says, uh, I told you there'd be, no, uh, uh, I don't need no three days to make no album. And he goes, well, we'll go for a triple album. And he goes, triple album, triple pay.